You've heard that price your engine oil means better protection. But every bottle sold in America with an API certification meets the same baseline as $60 bottles, even when it rings up at $15. Lab data shows budget synthetics like Walmart Supertech virtually match premium brands in wear protection, additive retention, and deposit control. So why do so many drivers still pay double or triple? The truth exposes more than marketing tricks, and it redefines what actually keeps your engine alive. The cost of not understanding this could be thousands of dollars. So what do oil prices really tell you, and where does the real risk actually start? Every bottle of engine oil on American shelves stamped with the API donut has already passed a series of demanding laboratory tests, whether it is a $15 store brand jug or a $60 boutique label. The API, the American Petroleum Institute, sets strict standards for every licensed oil, including the latest categories, SP and SQ. These standards are not marketing, they are a battery of real-world and bench tests like Sequence Iver B for piston ring and camshaft wear, Sequence Tweet ADH for high temperature deposits, and the TOST MHT test for turbocharger coking. To earn the API donut, an oil must limit average piston ring wear to 7 microns in the Sequence IVB, keep piston deposit scores above 9.2 out of 10 in the Sequence to H, and restrict turbo deposits to less than 30 milligrams. These are not suggestions, they are minimums every certified oil must meet regardless of price or brand. A closer look at used oil analysis data from independent labs like Blackstone shows what this means in practice. Take a 10,000 mile interval on a daily driven engine. Budget synthetics such as Walmart Supertech or Napa store brand routinely show ironware metals below 20 parts per million, right in line with top shelf synthetics like Mobile One or Royal Purple. In a head-to-head -head teardown, Napa's budget synthetic registered a total wear metal increase of just 14 parts per million, while Royal Purple, a premium oil, showed 24 parts per million. Fuel dilution, oxidation, and viscosity all stayed within safe limits, regardless of the price tag. Another test comparing $8 per quart and $18 per quart synthetics over a full year found no measurable difference in wear metals or additive retention. Even in engines with 100,000 miles or more, Blackstone reports that results from budget synthetics often mirror those from engines run on the most expensive brands with low iron, low silicon, stable viscosity, and healthy additive levels. Lab analysts who see thousands of oil samples confirm the pattern. They regularly see store brand synthetics performing just as well as, or even better than, premium brands in wear protection and deposit control. The biggest differences usually come down to how often the oil is changed and whether the correct viscosity is used, not the price on the bottle. The API Donut is a promise that every oil inside meets the same baseline for wear, deposit control, and oxidation resistance. Independent oil analysis backs up that promise with hard evidence, showing that for the vast majority of drivers, budget synthetics provide the same core protection as expensive options. The evidence is clear. Price alone does not buy better basic engine protection when the API standard is met. In the late 1990s, a fundamental change swept through the engine oil industry, one that most drivers never noticed, but which continues to shape what is inside every bottle today. For decades, the highest-priced synthetic oils relied on Group 4 polyalphaolefin PAO, base stocks. These were lab-made, uniform molecules engineered for exceptional heat stability and low volatility. The catch was that PAO was expensive to produce, and that cost was passed directly to consumers. Behind the scenes, oil companies were developing new refining techniques to push ordinary crude oil further. Through a process called severe hydrocracking and hydroisomerization, they transformed Group 3 mineral oils into highly pure, stable fluids. By 1999, these Group 3 base stocks matched many of the performance characteristics of older PAO synthetics in standard tests, but at a fraction of the cost. That same year, a marketing battle erupted. Castrol began labeling its new Group 3 based Syntec oil as full synthetic, even though its chemistry was closer to a heavily refined mineral oil than to a truly synthesized PAO. 
Mobile, the longtime champion of pure synthetic chemistry, filed a complaint with the National Advertising Division, arguing that only Group 4 and Group 5 oils deserved the synthetic badge. The National Advertising Division disagreed. Their ruling allowed Castrol and, by extension, every other brand now to call Group 3 oils synthetic as long as they pass the same performance tests. This decision, handed down in 1999, changed the marketplace overnight. Premium price tags, once justified by costly laboratory synthesis, now sat on bottles filled with much cheaper but heavily refined mineral oil. The cost to manufacture a Group 3 synthetic can be less than half that of a Group 4 PAO oil, yet retail prices rarely reflected the savings. Instead, marketing and legacy reputation kept prices high, and the word synthetic became more about perception than about chemistry. Today, the majority of full synthetic oils on store shelves are based on Group 3 stocks. Premium brands, budget store labels, and even many racing oils all share the same foundation. Only a handful of ultra-premium or racing oils still use significant amounts of Group 4 or Group 5. For most drivers, the difference is invisible, especially since American Petroleum Institute standards ensure that both types must pass the same wear deposit and oxidation tests. But the legal and chemical sleight of hand means that many drivers pay boutique prices for oil that costs little more to produce than the store brand sitting right beside it. This shift laid the groundwork for a market where price is often driven by branding and perceived exclusivity, not by exotic chemistry or real-world engine protection. It is a system that rewards marketing muscle and consumer trust while quietly blurring the lines between what is truly premium and what is simply well-packaged. Turbocharged engines run hotter and face rapid temperature swings every time the throttle opens. Inside a turbo, oil can see temperatures over 300 degrees Fahrenheit as it races through bearings spinning well past 100,000 revolutions per minute. Standard synthetics will survive, but premium oils built for high temperature, often with Group 4 or Group 5 base stocks and boosted antioxidant packages, keep viscosity stable and prevent coking on turbo shafts. Performance shop technicians see the difference firsthand. Turbos with heavy varnish or baked on deposits almost always ran on oil that broke down under heat stress. In these engines, paying extra for a true high temperature formula isn't just peace of mind, it's insurance against a $2,000 turbo replacement. Track and racing oils promise even more. Their formulas sacrifice detergent content for maximum film strength and thermal endurance. Straight weight racing oils, sometimes loaded with extra zinc and phosphorus, are designed for engines that run flat out, get torn down and rebuilt after every few weekends, and never see cold starts or grocery runs. The downside is that these oils leave out the detergents and dispersants needed to keep a daily driven engine clean. In a modern car with variable valve timing, running racing oil can actually cause sticky deposits, trigger check engine lights, and shorten the life of timing components. Technicians warn that racing oils are a tool for the track, not a magic potion for daily drivers. The same properties that protect at 8,000 revolutions per minute and 300 degrees Fahrenheit can create headaches on the street, where engines idle, cool off, and run for years between rebuilds. High mileage oils fill another niche, but not the one most drivers expect. Bottles labeled for engines past 75,000 miles often cost more and promise to rejuvenate tired seals and prevent leaks. In reality, these oils use the same Group 3 synthetic base as standard versions, with only a minor bump, often less than 1% in seal conditioning additives. Technical data sheets reveal nearly identical additive packages, with the only real difference being a slight increase in esters or softeners meant to swell old gaskets. No high mileage oil can fix a cracked seal or a worn out valve cover gasket. Only a wrench can do that. For most engines, any modern synthetic already keeps seals pliable far better than the conventional oils of decades past. The extra dollars for a high mileage label rarely buy more than a marketing story. A veteran performance shop technician sums it up. If you're running a stock engine and changing oil on schedule, there's no need to chase boutique brands. Spend more only if your engine is turbocharged, built for the track, or leaking so badly that you're topping off every week. 
Otherwise, the API donut on the bottle is the only badge you need. The 3000 mile oil change rule still echoes in quick lube ads and glove box stickers, but it is a relic from the 1970s. Back then, oil technology could not keep up with engine heat or contamination, and changing oil every 3000 miles was cheap insurance. Today, that advice drains wallets more than it protects engines. Modern synthetics, even the most affordable store brands are engineered to last at least 7,000 and often up to 10,000 miles between changes. Used oil analysis from independent laboratories shows iron and aluminum wear metals remain well below danger levels even at these extended intervals. Quick lube chains know this, but the old 3,000 mile script keeps cars flowing through their bays three times as often, tripling their business without adding any real value. Another costly mistake is ignoring the viscosity grade recommended by the manufacturer. Oil is not just about being slippery, it is about being the right viscosity at every temperature your engine faces. Running a thicker oil than specified, for example 10W40 instead of 0W20, can drop fuel economy by 2-3% and slow cold starts, especially in winter. On the other hand, using a thinner oil than called for can lead to increased oil consumption and even accelerated engine wear. The price on the bottle does not protect against these problems. Only the correct SAE grade, matched to your car's requirements, keeps oil flowing fast enough to reach every bearing and cam lobe, while staying thick enough to cushion moving parts under high load. The wrong viscosity, no matter how expensive, can cost hundreds in extra fuel and repairs over the life of an engine. Oil filters are the unsung heroes or hidden liabilities of every oil change. A cheap filter with cardboard end caps or thin media can collapse or bypass under pressure, letting unfiltered oil circulate through the engine. This is not a risk limited to bargain oils. Even the priciest synthetic cannot save an engine if the filter fails. Quality filters from brands like Wix, Purolator, or Motorcraft use metal end caps and synthetic blend media providing higher dirt capacity and structural integrity. When filters fail, used oil analysis often shows sudden spikes in silicon and wear metals, clear signs that grit and debris are circulating unchecked. Over time, this silent damage adds up, eating away at bearings and cylinder walls regardless of how much was spent on the oil itself. The bottom line is that engine longevity depends far more on smart maintenance choices than on the price tag of the oil. Following outdated advice using the wrong viscosity or skimping on filter quality costs real money and can shorten engine life. The evidence from laboratories and real-world engines is clear. Behavior at the service bay matters more than any brand or bottle ever will. Aftermarket oil additives line the shelves, promising everything from extra horsepower to longer engine life. But modern API Certified oils already contain a carefully balanced blend of detergents, antioxidants, anti-wear agents, and friction modifiers engineered by chemists to meet strict standards. Adding aftermarket boosters disrupts that balance. Oil analysis often shows that these extras can actually increase wear metals because the chemistry inside the bottle is thrown off. For most engines built in the last 30 years, pouring in a bottle of additive is more likely to waste money or even raise iron and copper levels in your next lab report. The only real exception is classic engines with flat tappet cams, which sometimes require extra ZDDP. Otherwise, leave the additives on the shelf. Bulk oil buying is another area where price and value often get confused. Fleets and savvy do-it-yourselfers who buy 55-gallon drums of AP, I certified synthetic oil can cut their per-change cost to around $10, compared to $20 or $30 for the same oil in retail jugs. The trick is freshness. Oil that sits for years can suffer additive settling or base stock degradation, no matter how much it originally cost. Smart buyers rotate stock and avoid overbuying, ensuring every change uses oil at its best. Diesel-rated oils carrying dual API certifications, such as CK4 for diesel and SP or SN for gasoline, offer another overlooked bargain. These dual-rated synthetics are engineered for heavy-duty soot handling and robust additive packages, yet often sell for less than boutique gasoline-only oils. 
In many cases, they deliver superior wear protection and gas engines, as long as the API donut confirms compatibility. The result is better value and strong protection, without paying a premium for a fancy label. Ester-based track oils are engineered for a world most drivers never see, where oil temperatures soar past 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and engines run flat out for lap after lap. In controlled dyno tests, Motul 300V, a pure ester racing oil, retained 92% of its high temperature viscosity after a simulated 20-minute track session at 284 degrees Fahrenheit. Redline's racing blend, after four back-to-back -back sessions with oil temperatures peaking at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, lost less than 8% of its viscosity. Standard API certified synthetics, by comparison, dropped 15 to 20% under the same punishment. These numbers matter when an engine is pushed to its thermal limits, where even a slight loss in viscosity can mean the difference between a clean teardown and a spun bearing. But on the street, where oil rarely cracks 200 degrees Fahrenheit, those extra dollars provide no measurable advantage. The story changes when the focus shifts from the racetrack to the real world of commercial fleet operations. Fleet managers responsible for 10,000 vehicles track every penny and every data point. Schneider National, running over 10,000 trucks, switched from premium synthetics to mid-grade AP. I certified oil and saved $1.2 million a year, while extending oil change intervals and seeing no increase in engine failures. UPS, after moving to a store brand synthetic, cut $4.5 million from its annual oil budget, with used oil analysis showing iron wear metals under 10 parts per million at 10,000 miles matching or beating their old premium brands. Industry surveys covering more than 100,000 fleet vehicles confirm the pattern. Mid-grade synthetics deliver 28% lower oil costs and equivalent engine longevity, with no uptick in repairs or downtime. A seasoned fleet maintenance manager puts it simply, We run the numbers every year. Premium oil just does not pay off for our trucks. As long as it is API certified, mid-grade synthetic keeps engines healthy and costs down. The verdict is in. For the 95% of drivers who never see a checkered flag or a turbo glowing red, the smartest money is on a quality mid-grade synthetic, changed on schedule and matched to the right filter. The proof is in the lab results, the fleet ledgers, and the engines themselves. Price is no substitute for smart, consistent maintenance, and for most, it is just money left on the table. Right now, every bottle with an API certification gives most drivers the same baseline protection, no matter the price. As synthetic oil technology advances and old myths fade, the real difference lies in how you maintain your engine, not in what you pay for oil. In the end, discipline outlasts dollars. What is your oil change ritual? Let me know in the comments.